90.7 WCLH Wilkes-Barre is the home of Metal Mondays. And if you're a local fan of Metal Mondays, you or someone you know may also be a fan of Harpo. Just like the Devil's Organization killing kids every night that is docking, Harpo is the hardest ass-kicking rockers Pennsylvania offers. Are you ready to be on a live album? Well then let's get it on! Since 1974, Harpo has remained a huge, yet local, act. It all started with founding members John Lloyd Kistner, currently on lead vocals and keyboards, and Billy Rock Kerstetter, currently on vocals and bass. Their debut self-titled album was released in 1981. Harpo's first track choice, Rockabye Blues. Harpo's follow-up studio release came six years later with the recording of Arm to Deliver, which contained many tunes they bring to a live performance, including my favorite, Gas House Alley Rock. On the back of the Arm to Deliver vinyl sleeve, Harpo gives special thanks to the stations WHLM, WTLQ, WQSU, WTPA, WJET, WCMF, WXRK, WIYY, WPSU, WBYR for believing in them before getting that big deal. Notice at that time there was a lack of WCLH, but since I became metal director at the station, Harpo Music has been added heavily into Metal Monday and Metal Lockdown rotation, so you could say, I believe in them. But why isn't this kick-ass music airing on Sirius XM? And why didn't Harpo debut an MTV music video back in the day? Well, Harpo was on the verge of getting signed to a major record label until a tragedy on Christmas Eve of 1988. Singer Lloyd was hit head-on by a drunk driver, and it took him one year to recover from his injuries. Although the accident resulted in a missed opportunity, Harpo continued to record music and tour. In 1992, their current lineup would be complete with Chris Silvani on lead guitar and Richard Smith on drums, both guys hailing from Williamsport. Now with this core lineup, they would release Too Much Is Just Enough in 92, which is a compilation of their best songs from their previous three releases and five songs that had never been recorded. As the music industry was changing in the 90s, Harpo still delivered this classic album. Even though I and many fans appreciate what we got and still have from the band, I asked guitarist Chris for his input on the fate of Harpo. Yeah, um, it, it was truly a band that, that should have been signed. No ifs, ands, or buts about that. And, uh, you know, the I, I guess Harpo was kind of one of those bands that that underground, when I say underground, you know, every, everybody knew who the band was and everybody loved the band. It, it's just unfortunate that, that getting signed never happened for the band. So, yeah, and I think as far as timing, things, things kind of hit clunky when things started happening for him. It, it, you know, again, I'm talking before my time in the band. Yeah. Um, the, the timing just wasn't right. And then when, when I got in the band and we, we were writing stuff and showcased in New York City, well, guess what? The grunge was happening. All the, you know, there was other crap going on too that it just took away from anything ever happening for the band. Whatever the outcome, Harpo remains a crowd pleaser in Wilkesbury. I attended a PAX show at the Woodlands on November 4th in 2017. Billy Rock and Harpo made it clear on the stage that night that it's all about the fans. Some fans were brought on stage to show off their vintage Harpo t-shirts, symbols of their longtime dedication. Shock struck the audience as Billy Rock pulled up an intoxicated fan. The fans stumbled across the stage, fell into Rich's drum set, and busted his nose, blood surely followed. Harpo history was made that night as Billy Rock informed the audience that he never saw anything like that in the band's 40 years. Later that night, Harpo posted a picture to Facebook of them with the injured fan. They wanted to let everyone know that he was okay. Now, that dude has a story to tell. Just like many other Harpo fans around our area, I talked with Gary Peters of 44 about Harpo. 
Why do you like Harpo? Because they rock. Can you kind of briefly describe the venues in which you used to see Harpo and your favorite memories of those venues? Well, they were usually small local bars. My favorite memories would probably be the original staircase because the sound in there was awesome. The stage sat up high. I don't know, it was just a bunch of metalheads in the in the audience. A lot of mullets. <laughs> Speaking of metalheads, I don't know if this guy had a mullet, but can you describe the one fan that you've described to me before, his name and his affiliation with Harpo? Well, his uh, name is what was Vance Fetterman. He'd since passed away. It actually may have been on the way home from a Harpo concert. But yeah, he, he liked to follow him around quite a bit. He was probably their biggest, biggest fan, I'd say. He spent his own money to have a video from their performance at the staircase and I believe it was like 2000 had his own shirts made up he, he was he was definitely their uh, biggest fan he would come off a night shift stay up all day and drive from uh, where we live in Wilkesbury to Erie Pennsylvania just to see a Harpo concert and then drive home usually after having a couple of drinks too so uh, that may or may not have been the or the contributing factor to his accident when she died. And this rockumentary goes out to Vans and all you Harpo fans out there. I am Kendall, metal director at 90.7 WCLH, reminding you to always keep it locked with Harpo.